Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and welcome to another player profile. Now, I just wanted to talk about this man. He is a fellow that I think will cause a fair bit of debate throughout the pre-season and that's Stephen Cornelio. Now, he is priced somewhat awkwardly, but even in the short time that I've been thinking about his selection, I've sort of been a bit in and a bit out at times, not quite sure where I stand, but having thought about it, at least at this point in time, as we near Christmas, I am probably leaning towards a no. Now, let me go straight off the top. I think Canelo is an absolute jet. He's priced at 452, absolute bargain. A bloke who's averaged three figures before, a number two pick. He's played 95 games, 24 years old. The man's in his prime, in a great team. I brought him in late last year. I think when he came back, played a couple of games, dropped ever so slightly from what was already a reasonably nice price and um, snapped him up. He didn't do too well in the back end of the season, just sort of averaged reasonably okay. I'll dish you a few numbers in a sec, but everything is pointing quite nicely to yes, but it's more of just a structural belief in Supercoach in the midfield that I think it'll be very hard pressed for me to select him. Of course, we do have a long way to go before we start really honing in on those sort of selections because he might be a guy that we have to see through the preseason to really convince us one way or another. But I just want to talk a few numbers for now. Last year, of course, he didn't play too many games. He did have some serious ankle problems. Heard it in the JLT, didn't get a game until round seven. So he played round seven and eight, scored 101 and 71, then did it again against the Pies. So that saw him out for quite a bit. Didn't return again till round 19. Then his numbers from round 19 till the Giants were eventually knocked out by the Tigs. 88, 120, 91, 81, 88. That rounds out the home and away season. Finals really picked it up. 132, 126. And a 59 against Richmond. I think he did score about 90 AFL fantasy points. But clearly, I don't think anyone had great effect or impact for the Giants that day. And we'll give him an out for that. But... Very interesting. He is a very consistent player. Very consistent player. And watching him, I can't remember which game it was, but I think I must have just brought him in, went to a game at Eddie had, really watched him closely, and he is beautiful around the clearance. He's tough, in and under sort of player. So he gets a lot of points from his clearances and his tackles. And alongside Callan Ward, he and Cornelio, uh, well, he and Ward, I should say, really do a great job inside. And obviously there's Josh Kelly as well. I mean, there's plenty of midfielders through that Giants team. Plenty of stars. Their depth is something that's starting to come into question, but plenty of stars in there. So he is a guy that will cause quite a bit of debate, and that's because he's your classic mid-pricer. Now, I think mid-pricers do our head in in any position, but midfield, you've really got to be 100% sure. Why is that? Because forward lines, defensive lines, you know, it chops and changes depending on who's in there and, and things like that. With who are the real top ones, it seems to change up quite a bit more. Where the midfield, we can spend our coin in there and spend it well, and you can really bank on some guys in that top echelon of the midfield that are really going to produce the points, and you're going to get exactly what you paid for. So to spend 450000 in the midfield on something that we're not 100% sure on can be risky. Now, Will Cornelio average well? Yes, he will. But the question is, how well? Now, I think a lot of people will look towards that 2016, where he averaged 105.9. Of course, he first started in 2012. He's averaged in since then 75.8, 74.1, 83.5. Made a nice jump to 91.7. And then 2016 was his year. 105.9. Really played some great footy, particularly early in the season. Was fantastic the first nine or ten rounds and really announced himself as a genuine player backing up that draftee position. Now, 2017, as I said, didn't get a good run at it. Of course, some reasonable numbers in there. He is consistent, which I like. That 2016 season, points that he scored in between 89 and 121, 12 times, really good. Above that, 139, 138, 135, 127, 126, and below that 89 mark, 62, 75, 66 and 78. So what does that tell me? He's a consistent guy. He might not get you too many 150s, maybe not even 130s as often as some, but equally he's not going to dish out too many 50s. You know, the odd 60, but you know, of course, 
that's just one season. You'd probably look to think he might improve on that consistently level and not even have too many 60s or 70s. So I think what we're expecting from him is a guy who really is between the 90 and 110 very, very often. So look, I've waffled on about stats and numbers and, and why I do love him and why he's a good player. Why off the top did I say I probably won't be selecting him? I'll talk you through that now. Now, 450K, is that a bargain for Cornelio? Yes, it is. But does that really warrant selection? Now, when I look at my selecting of any player, you're picking them for one or two reasons, and some people will have already heard me say this. You're either picking a guy who's going to make you money, and then you're eventually going to trade out, and I often think 150K should be a minimum. Certainly guys around your 200, 300 mark, you're hoping they can make you a little bit more than that, depending how cheap they are. Or you're obviously picking them to stay in your side for the whole year and score plenty of points. Now, I'm not so sure Keneally is going to do either. So that's a bit concerning because at 450, we'd really need to see Keneally go bang early and really get some coin going unless you seriously have faith that he could be a top 10, probably top 12 mid, which would be a pretty brave call because I'm not sure we could bank on that. If he comes out and lights the preseason on fire, then he'll certainly get people talking. But the fact is I could not really see Canelo staying in our sides for an extended period of time after the buys. Now, he may well, he may well surprise. Evidence that we've seen, 106. That's a pretty handy average, probably good enough for our mid seven, mid eight, most definitely. But there's a little bit of risk associated now with that body and we're just not quite sure what we're gonna get from him because he only has had one outstanding good season. Now, of course, all those numbers I said before, his age bracket, the profile of being a great junior and eventually gonna be a premium mid, a lot of it does point towards him having an extremely good season, averaging between 105 and 110. But at this point in time, it's very much a balancing act to where I'm at. So I think you're not picking him to make money because that's just silly. You don't pick a guy at 450 to make you some quick cash and then trade off. I mean, clearly we're picking him as a bit of a value premium, a guy that we're pretty confident will be in our team for a long period of time, has a chance to average that 110, you know, that risk versus reward. He's a chance to average around that 110 and he's nicely priced. So a lot of people probably be sitting there going, look, I reckon he's a handy chance to bring out some 2016 form again. And if he does, I'm getting him at 450 and I'm going to be pretty happy. You know, maybe he has a bit of a slow appear at certain stages, I'll lose a bit of faith. No worries, he'll come good. Average of 106, I'll take that. And that's fair enough. And that's definitely something I may come across a pre-season and depending on structure, he may well fit into the side depending on pre-season form other options but I certainly am a bit concerned about spending 450k on Cornelio I just I do really rate him I'm a bit torn even as I'm doing this video I'm a little bit torn I'm saying some things and almost talking myself into it saying others go no nah, no nah, remember that so I would have to say this one could fluctuate but at this point in time it is a no because I think we've just got so many great options in the premium area in the midfield, as we always do. And there is some value there with Cripps. I think Fife offers value. I think Pendlebury even offers a bit of value. If you like Hanabry, he might offer a bit of value. Tommy Rockliffe, not endorsing that, but he could offer some value if you think he's gonna really go bang like we've seen him many a time before at his new club. Who knows what he could do. So there is value there with guys who are more proven than Cornelio. So, that's where I'm at. 450k, very nice price. He's certainly undervalued. There's no doubt about that. You're getting him at a very nice price. But my concern is there's no point getting Cornelio. You have him for seven or eight rounds. He's averaged 101. He's gone up 60, 70k or whatever it is. And that's no man's land. That's like being halfway up the court. You've, you've chipped your little ball on the tennis court. You're approaching the net and it comes back and you're in no man land in the middle of the court. You've either got to be a baseliner, grinding from the back, or you've got to get into that net and pound the volley away. So my concern is that Canelo is not going to tick either box, that he's not going to make enough coin. And obviously, if he's not making enough coin, I mean, the two go hand in hand. I mean, points equals coin. But 
you're generally picking them for one of the two. And most will be picking him purely for the points because he is a bit of a higher valued mid price. Or I think mid price certainly does come under anywhere from 200 to 450, I'd, I'd have to say. Um, so you're probably in a bit of a higher echelon in terms of mid price. Certainly the top before you start going into guys that we probably would refer to as more premium fellas. So what you're going to have to decide on is, is he going to be a fella that you can keep the whole season, if not most of it? Because the scenario we do not want is that we pick him and he's scoring okay. You know, he's scoring 92 and 107, 86, 104, 112, 98. You know, they're nice scores. They're contributing well. But, He's not going to be a premium guy. That probably gets you an average of 9,900, 101, 102. We really need it to be 105 plus. Now, can he do that? Will he do that? Does he have the runs on the board? Do we take a bit of a punt because of his history? They're all questions we'll have to have a bit of a think about and, and most likely we'll revisit many a time, definitely when the JLT comes around. But I thought it'd be very interesting to talk about Cornelio early on in the piece because he's been a guy that I really want to pick. But part of me just goes, oh, Jesus, midfield, heavy mid-pricer, not sure I can do this. You know, if it goes wrong, then it's drastic. Has to be career best to go right. You know, all those sort of things that you think about. So I think at the end of the day, probably going to go through your side. You're going to have a few other players, pick a few guys, pick most of your team. You might then assess, well, is there room for a Cornelio? Is there room to take a little bit of extra risk? So... At this point in time, it's a no for me. I picked my little side the other day, just a bit of a draft team, obviously, and he wasn't in it, so I felt there was a bit of value elsewhere, and I really do like to just look at my first six midfielders and go, yeah, they're Jets. They're Jets. I think they're going to be outstanding players and service me well throughout the whole season. So that's what I'll be hoping to do. Cornelio probably doesn't fill me with enough confidence just yet, albeit it is December, but you never know. He might win me over through the pre-season. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, I thought it was a very interesting topic to bring up at this point in time. Hopefully there's a bit of discussion. Let me know what you think on Cornelio. Very talented man, but is he too awkwardly priced? Let me know where you stand on it. Come in away. I do plan on getting to these. Got a little bit of time, just a few days off over the Christmas period. So I'll hopefully get across to a few comments. So definitely appreciate that you guys are getting involved. Like the video away, subscribe to the channel, all the good stuff, and I'll catch you soon.